I don't like tapering. Got the old taper tantrum. Some more of the taper aches and pains. I've got a small little race this Friday. Going to do a half marathon at some uh, 12-hour event. Just planning on doing 13.1 miles and going home. So I backed off just doing 60 minutes in the morning and little light workouts in the evening. And my body just feels really beat up and torn up. So this afternoon when I headed out to hike with my friends out at Hard Park, definitely was feeling it. But we actually had a pretty quick walk run. I find that when you really do real training, when you do get to a taper, your body kind of goes, oh my gosh, what are you doing? And so sometimes when you're putting in the consistent mile after mile, the body just gets used to it. And when you take it, take it off, the body actually kind of almost, you know, goes, wow. And it starts feeling aches and pains. It's almost kind of like you've squashed everything down and held everything together. And then when you take it easy, everything kind of springs apart. So that's at least my observation. And of course, I always tell people, if you've done the proper training, your taper doesn't need to be as long as someone who doesn't train properly because then you've got to taper quite some time. So that's where I'm at right now. One thing you really want to avoid when you're tapering for a race that you kind of feel important is not to go and do other things during your taper like honeydews around the house or, you know, like I got my spin bike behind me here, jumping on that and doing more of that or doing things out of the ordinary. You need to really take it easy, back off and taper off, you know, in schoolwork, housework, life and all that type of things to an extent. And speaking of like the cycling aspect, I saw this article the other day and I'll put it in the show notes. I think it was in Trail Runner magazine talking about cycling and running and can cycling make you a better runner? And I would say, mm, not really. Um, I find almost everyone I've talked to over the past 40 years, they don't spend enough time running. I often tell people, you know, if you want to be a runner, you need to run. If you don't feel like running or you're hurt and can't run, walk. If you feel like you can't walk or hike um, because of injury or you don't want to, you know, what you should do instead of anything else is take a nap, really. And, you know, and then kind of question whether you really want to be a runner. I mean, you can hop on a bicycle or do cross training when you still want to train, but you're too injured structurally to run or walk because, you know, just having knee issues, joint issues. But if it's just muscular issues, just back off your pace because, as I often say, everyone goes too hard too often, but they don't go enough. So this article talks about indoor cycling, which I think is really where you should be at, especially if you're running. Outdoor cycling is just way too dangerous. Lots of articles about it. It also is very time consuming. Putting all the gear on and have mechanicals and stuff. Get yourself a good, steady, reliable spin bike of sort indoor trainer and use that. Then you don't have to worry about cars and other things and weather. You can just hop on it and get it done. But first, make sure you put in those miles. And so it even says, you know, obviously with the pandemic, you know, that it says that uh, equipment sales have been up 218%. And of course, lots of people have been buying treadmills and spin bikes and all those kind of things. And I really recommend getting them and having them. And it actually kind of talks about that one of the good things about an indoor stationary bike is it's low stress, easy to master, and pretty quiet. And it's actually cheaper than a treadmill, which is definitely true. Definitely need to shop around. I have a Nordic treadmill, which I got probably for a thousand bucks three or four years ago, still running strong. I was looking into getting a Nordic bike, and then thankfully I found out that Proform is basically owned by Nordic, and you get it for half the price. And so that's what I have. And then, of course, Nordic Track, along with lots of other companies, have these great coaching things with all the videos and stuff. In this article, they talked to Ultra Champ coach and Nordic Track sponsored athlete Jeff Browning. And I really like Jeff. He's an older athlete. I think he goes by the GOAT. And, you know, he's done very well at many, many big time ultra races. And he talks about how he likes to use, you know, the stationary bike, especially when he's got some injuries or little nagging things. He also uses it to warm up for um, workouts, especially when he's going to do some of his strength training. And he has some really good strength training, running specific kind of drills online. And you should definitely check those out. I myself do the same thing. I'll get on the spin bike for 10, 15 minutes, do a little warm up, then go out and do my afternoon run on the treadmill or on the roads and do that also when I'm going to do some kettlebell. It's a great way to just kind of get you warmed up and not have the pounding. And I think that's definitely the case. And especially, you know, you live in a place where the weather's pretty frightful. Having a spin bike is nice. Um, hopefully you have a treadmill so you can hop on it. But even then, you know, warm up on the spin bike and then go get your run and then use it as a cool down. And it just adds to that benefit. And, you know, if you're getting in your morning run, you know, throw in an after and you don't do doubles, throw in an after 
at noon spin ride to build up some more cardio. Of course, the best way really, especially if you're going to be doing ultras and stuff to work on your cardio is to go out hiking. I can't, uh, you know, it just definitely helps you to be a, become a better hiker and walker and get on the treadmill and put in that things. So uh, until you get about 10 hours of uh, time on your feet, you really shouldn't be adding into cycling into that mix. Another thing that Browning says that's good with the spin bike is, you know, you can get on it and take care of business. He does coaching calls on it, you know, or just puts in extra miles, gets some more time on that aerobic, working on the conditioning. And one of the things they talked about, which I really thought was interesting, and um, was that about the cadence thing. And that's definitely true. Uh, I've got this iFit program I use, and it shows my cadence. And, you know, cadence is very important when you're running. You know, you're trying to get that 180 steps a minute, 90 on each foot. And so when you're using the bike, you can kind of work on that turnover without having the impact. And I find that definitely helps me a lot. I get on a spin bike, try and get it up to 90. And then when I go running, I'm just kind of lit more conscious of my cadence and running. And it's going to make you lighter on your feet. And, you know, just on the bike, you're working on technique. You should carry that over to working on the um you know, on, on the roads. And then the other thing that's nice is you can work on your turnover, but you don't have to really pound your body or really get your heart rate up. You know, that's kind of a nice thing. You can spin out at 90 where like, if you're going to run that 90 cadence running, you got to kind of be moving. So you can get some, uh, spin your cadence on a lot higher than you would on an easy run. And of course, you know, that will transfer over to your running. Of course, you do now realize that, you know, running and cycling are two different things. And you definitely, when you get back out on the roads, you need to de definitely remember that. So the bottom line is cycling is not going to make you a better runner if that's what you're doing most of the time. But once you've got it up to where you're doing 7 to 10 hours of running a week, adding in some cycling as a warm-up, cool-down, or maybe a second workout of the day, it's definitely going to happen and be helpful. You know, you got to follow that 80-20 rule, so, you know, don't get on that bike every time and just pound it. When I had my run camp going for like a decade, I often at first had ladies coming and running Tuesdays and Thursdays with me. Those were our kind of faster days, but then they were doing spin classes on Mondays and Wednesdays. So they were going hard like four days a week. And I really had to say, no, you can't. The spinning is not, you know, there is no such thing as an easy spin class. Maybe there is now, but back then there wasn't. And I used to say, you know, I'm coaching high school kids, some of the better kids around, and we don't make them run hard three, four times a week. So if you're going hard spin Monday, Wednesday, and then Tuesday, Thursday, running hard, and then Saturday long, you're just doing too much too often. And that violates the whole stay healthy, be boring, not epic.